You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring scripture with Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom and Dr. Frederick J. Long. Welcome and enjoy. Aloha, friends. Michael Halcom here, and I am launching another new segment for the podcast. This is called Three Things. And on Three Things, which we're going to try to have every Monday, I'm just going to share three things I'm thinking about with you. So in the first episode here of three things, I'd like to share the uh, news about the Center for Pastor Theologians. Maybe you've never heard of this, uh, the Center for Pastor Theologians. Uh, This is um, a group of nearly, well, at, at present, about 120 members uh, re- representing roughly about 30 different Protestant uh, traditions. Um, and these 130 or 120 members at present are split up into different fellowships. Um, and one that I'm part of is called the Ecclesio Theologian Fellowship. So the idea is um, that the folks in this group are theologians with terminal degrees, that is like a PhD or uh, the equivalent, who are also serving in the church, who are pastoring. And um, yeah, so I was just accepted into this group, and they have a couple meetings every year, uh, the Center for Pastors Theologians. And you can check that out. You can check out the CPT just by going to pastortheologians.com. Uh, some good resources there. There's a podcast and um, maybe you're listening and you'd like to apply. They have uh, a, um, various fellowships too. So for example, they have the Ecclesial Theologian Fellowships. They have a Student Theologian Fellowships for some of you who might be students listening. They also have Local Theologian Fellowships. You can just click the Fellowships tab, tab on their website and check that out. So yeah, Center for Pastor Theologians. Um so excited to be part of that. That's thing one. Uh, thing two is the Glossa House podcast is expanding, not just in terms of its offerings. We're trying to get to having um, episodes going five, six, perhaps in the future, maybe even seven days a week. I don't know. But um, we're also expanding on our platforms. So we are on... Spotify now and uh, iTunes and Google podcasts and various other platforms. So uh, 14, I think we're at now. So that's pretty cool. Um, If you are hosting a podcast or you have your own podcast going, it may be worth while looking into different uh, podcast submission platforms or sites to get your to get your podcast going. Anchor FM, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, iTunes, Castbox, Edify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Overcast FM, Pandora, Pocket Cast, Radio Rep- Radio Public, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and the list goes on. But um, yeah, pretty cool. So uh, proof text and as various many podcast episodes are getting out there, which I'm really excited about. Um, and then finally, i uh, just been thinking about uh, infant baptism lately. I just did a sermon where I addressed that. And so on these three things, a podcast, it literally can be about any three things, just three things that, that I'm thinking about or three things that are happening, whatever, any three things. So infant baptism is one that I've been thinking about. And um, when I, I used to not be a proponent of it, but now I am. And there's been some obvious theological shifts along the way, but one of the ways that that I think about infant baptism or I describe it is, you know, when I lived in Kentucky, um, my, my wife and I both have degrees from University of Kentucky, and because Kentucky doesn't have any professional sports teams, the, the college sports teams are huge, and in Lexington, Kentucky, being a UK fan, it's like, a religious experience. And um, when uh, an old friend had 
uh, him and his wife, they, their, their baby was born, you know, at the hospital, the, the doctors, when they bring the baby back, they, they wrap them in this sort of white blanket with pink and blue stripes. And then they put like a, that kind of onesie on them and a, a little beanie sock hat that looks the same. It's white with pink and blue stripes. And um, when the medical staff brought the baby to the family, they immediately took off the beanie, took off the ones, they took off the blanket and they put a UK Wildcats beanie on a UK Wildcats onesie and a UK Wildcats blanket. And as I think about that, it's a great analogy for what happens at baptism, even infant baptism, that these parents were signaling um, that this child has been born into a story that precedes them, that includes many people that's much bigger than them, that they are now part of this story, that um, they are not unclothed in the story, but now the story is going to get down in them and they're going to be a UK fan later, hopefully. And infant baptism is similar. We are clothing the infant in the story of Christ and getting the story down in them raising them in the story that they will um, walk in that later in life. But it's the, the, the job or the task of godly parents to nurture and cultivate that. And uh, I just think it's a beautiful imagery or image for thinking about infant baptism. So those are three things. Um, I hope you find those interesting or beneficial. Uh, listen in to more episodes of the Prove Text podcast and all of its various mini series. Aloha. Looking for creative ways to launch your biblical language studies to the next level? We here at Glosa House create resources with you in mind. We've created a stock of innovative and cutting edge audio, video, digital, and print resources to help you reach your language goals. Visit GlosaHouse.com to find what you've been looking for. Glosa House, language resources for the global community.